it's been crazy because the the biggest change for me is that I've been traveling all over the world. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the next episode of the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gor Nation. My name is Phil and today we have a really special guest again, a really, really special guest, the two times world champion, <laughs> the four times national champion from the Netherlands, Melanie Driesen. I'm really happy to have you here and to talk about with you about your story, about your workout advice. Welcome to the show, Melanie. Thank you so much and thank you for inviting me. So I'm really excited for this conversation and let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, that's true. So uh, for the people who don't know you or just are interested in how you present yourself, you are on a birthday party and somebody approaches you and says, hey, who are you? I'm Frank. Uh, who are you and how do you present yourself? Uh, well, I would just say my name is Melanie and I'm 27 years old from the Netherlands. Depends on what kind of birthday it is, but this is going to be an international birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a, I'm a full-time athlete training, uh, but also besides that, I'm working in a restaurant because I need to pay my bills, of course. And since I'm not doing that with the sport, I'm just... Uh, doing a little bit of work in the in the restaurant okay so yeah that's it so that already brings up uh, quite an interesting topic because uh like uh, something that we're all working on i guess in the sport right now is to make it possible that uh, somebody who's a world champion somebody who dominates the the dutch uh, calisthenics community uh, or like uh, like the competitions let's say like this um isn't able to to live from the sport um so uh yeah like what um what is uh what is calisthenics from your eyes like right now how do you explain the sport how do you explain that you have to work besides in a restaurant yeah i think because the sport is so new we don't really have uh, any sponsors or some big companies that that help us grow the sport i think that's the whole problem and because we, we are a new sport so people really have to get into this new sport And hopefully in the future, they'll be like, oh, wow, this sport is so amazing. I want to spend some money on it, you know. But for now, um, yeah, we, it's a shame actually that as an athlete, we have to work besides it. Because for me pers personally, it's really hard because I work in the evening. So I'll like finish work at 11. Then I go home before I sleep. It's already midnight. And then the next day I have to train again. So it's not ideal. But yeah, you have to go, you have to do it. True. So like, what does your typical day look like? Uh, you wake up at, at what time? Normally I would wake up at 7.30. Um, so then I'll just wake up, get a tea or a coffee. And most of the time I go to the gym around 10, 11, something like that. And it depends on the day because some days I'm working uh in the day but some days i'm working in the evening um and then also i'm training sometimes during the day or sometimes i'm training during the evening so my days are really different i, okay. I mostly i go just with the flow and i'll see like if i wake up i'm thinking okay today i really want to train on this then i'll just go go with that okay yeah nice and i'll always see you training in different gyms like uh, a lot in, in primitive gym but also like uh Uh, you switch gyms a lot or how do you do it? Yeah, because we have so much different gyms. Um, for example, Primitive, it's quite far for me. So I have to go by, by my car. Um, but we do freestyle most of the times there. So if I'm not freestyling, I'm just focusing on strength or flexibility. I'm just going to one of the local gyms here. And there's a few gyms that I can train at. So it depends really on what, again, what I feel like or what my plans are the, the rest of the day where I'm going to train. But it's really nice that I have so much opportunities and places that I can, can be training at. So that's true. That's yeah. a win. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, like, do you train also outdoors sometimes or? Yeah. When it's like sunny, we, I have now a bar, like two minutes walking from my house. Yeah. So that's perfect. And we train in Amsterdam outside. We have a lot of parks in the Netherlands. So it's really good actually here yeah nice good for you 
Okay, um, so let's get a few steps back. Um, how did you get in touch with Calisthenics? What did you do before? And well, how were your first uh, workouts, competitions of street workout or calisthenics? Yeah, I started um, in 2014. Um, before that, I was a gymnast for 11 years. Yeah, 11. And then I switched to fitness for two years. But fitness was kind of boring for me. And I was always the, the, the person that was uh, doing some exercises on the mat. You know, I would never use the, the machines or anything because I... I didn't understand anything and I wasn't really excited. So I was the one doing Tabata workouts or just some push-ups or, or something like that. But I got so bored. And then I saw a group that were doing a lot of pull-ups and push-ups and just all the basic calisthenics exercises. So I was like, okay, what is this? What are you guys doing? And they say, yeah, this is calisthenics. And I said, okay, is it possible for me to join? And it's funny because first they were like, kind of laughing because there was only men in that class okay. and then they were like oh no but we know you were an ex-gymnast I think you you can do this you know so they were like oh yeah, yeah yeah you can you can join of course so I joined for like a half year I did a lot of basic workout and then in the newspaper there was like a, a story of uh, competitions coming up in the Netherlands in a new park and I was like is there competitions in this sport like I had, didn't have any clue. So I just went there and just, I was like, okay, let's check this out. And then I saw everybody swinging on the bar. And back in 2014, it's really funny because the level was so different than now. So it was like grown ups playing in the, in the playground, you know, and yeah. they were trying some cool things, but it was totally different than now. But still, I was really excited when I saw this because it was kind of looking like gymnastics, but a little bit more urban so a little bit cooler in my opinion and then after a month i was doing the first world championship so it went really quick from there well and what was the experience like between uh, your training group in the netherlands your first uh, few trainings your first weeks months of training and then the world championship how was this contrast well the the world championship back then was also kind of lame you know, what we were doing, one arm L-sits, uh, hanging L-sits, you know, maybe the maximum that we did was like a, a 360 from a muscle position. But overall, there was not so, not crazy tricks. Maybe uh, I know Ona Kivela from Finland, she was doing a switchblade. So that was like, wow, she just, what did she do, you know? Okay. But after like years and years and years, the level just went like, like sky high it's, it's, not, it's like crazy it, for me also it was really hard to always keep on uh, on level because you have to work so hard because every time new people coming in and yeah the level is growing and growing so that was really awesome to see that's true uh, like you also saw that we uploaded an old battle from 2016 from the the queen <laughs> of the bar competition and like i remember everybody was cheering when you did a muscle up you know like people were like oh she did a muscle up <laughs> and even me i was like I wow i've never seen a girl doing a muscle up so uh, like the the level yeah. is crazy how it changed uh, but it was so funny to see that video because of course i remember the competition but i couldn't remember what what i did in the competition and then when i saw myself i was like it's so funny because i feel like back in the days we were way more creative because we didn't have a lot of tricks so we had to be creative to fill the time you know yeah. and now because there are so many tricks the create like a lot of people are not really getting any like really creative anymore because they just choose okay i'm gonna do a ginger 360 540 and okay that's that's it you know so yeah would be cool if uh, people are getting more creative again. Yeah, and like I also for remember, me, you know, for me this is the same. You know, I I have to, yeah, come up with some new things maybe. Yeah, and like it seemed more relaxed when I watched the videos from from early on. Um, the the athletes had some time to cheer up the the public like in in between of the sets and right now like the athletes have so many tricks so, so they want to fit in their uh, they planche their ginga their everything so they don't have any time left to like uh, yeah to talk with the crowd or to communicate with the crowd that's true yeah yeah they're more, more like focused on their self yeah. uh, 
yeah but i think also because the the elements and the the tricks are getting a lot harder so you have to focus more it's kind of hard if you really have to do a hard trick and then you are focusing on the public you know yeah of course yeah so sure. so let's talk about your first uh, championship world championship how did it go out for you what was your experience there <laughs> i remember i was super nervous because I go in this new sport, I, I'm doing calisthenics freestyle for like a month now. And then I have to join the world championship. So I was like, I was so nervous. I didn't know what's, what was going on. And my, my rounds, if I go, if I look back at it right now, I'm laughing at myself because it doesn't make any sense what I'm doing right there, you know? And then I'm also failing, but in the same time, I'm trying to act a little bit cool because you know, we are a new urban calisthenics style. So it's, yeah, it's really just, it's just a laugh to, to watch about, but it was fun. Okay. <laughs> Let's put it there. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what would you give to someone who is just in front of his first competition and who, or somebody who is thinking about competing? What would you mm -hmm. give him like as an advice from your experience now? I would say just like go in the competition prepared. So don't go in a competition like, okay, I'm, I'm really going to freestyle my, competition because most of the time that's when it goes wrong so yeah. if you come prepared and you just enjoy and be in the moment i think that's the most important thing okay nice so like yeah get it okay so let's switch back to the to the um present so uh you're quite successful and you're the current uh, world champion um so like uh, crazy last year for you uh mm. like um how is it how is it like like right now like how did it change your life uh how how did the sport influence you from the when you look back like doing fitness uh, on the mattresses and tabata workouts uh to <laughs> now yeah it's been crazy because the the biggest change for me is that uh i've been traveling all over the world like i've in one year I traveled like maybe 16 times. So it was, it was insane right now because of the coronavirus, it's not a lot of traveling going on. So hopefully that will get back because I really enjoy uh, doing the workshops and everything around the world. But yeah, it's been, it's been some, some crazy years. <laughs> And do you feel like st stress on your body? Like I uh, also talked with uh, other competitive athletes like Tony Gaste, like he also did a lot, a lot of competitions then uh, last year. Um, but like, how, how does it affect your body? Like traveling so much, competing so much? Right now I'm not competing that much because um, maybe competing like four times a year. Mm -hmm. I just choose the competition that I really uh, want to go to. So that's well. Uh, the only thing that's, yeah, what makes you really tired, the travelings are really nice, but it it's really tiring because you have to wait on the airport, you have to wait on the plane, then most of the time in the country you have to wait more. So it's really, really good for an experience, but sometimes I was like, okay, I'm just going to stay home for just two months because I need to recover from the flights, you know? Oh. So, yeah. Okay. And also yeah. if I'm competing, I'm um, mostly I'm not uh, traveling the months before that. So I just can stay here and, and get prepared for the competition. Get it. And something that also went into my head when I prepared the competition, uh, the, the competition, the, uh, the interview, um, I also thought about um, like the, the last competition where we saw each other uh, at uh, like in the Netherlands from Royal Bus, uh, the, uh, the cup uh, where you competed yeah. just out of fun um, oh, against, yeah, yeah. against men. And I, it, it jumped into my head when you said that you began training with, with men only. Um, so what, what is it like, like as a, as a female calisthenics athlete, uh, do you compare yourself to other like male athletes? Uh, what is it like in such a, like calisthenics is more a male sport right now, like un unfortunately, but uh, how, do, how does it affect you? In the beginning, I remember that uh, the level was still so low. So for example, in the dynamics, I was always comparing myself with the guys because I saw guys doing new things, but back then um and the new move was a shrimp flip so i tried to do shrimp flip and i succeeded so i could level up with the guys in in dynamics 
Um, but after a while, the level went up so high that for me it was impossible to to like compare myself with the guys because they are already starting to do 720s on everything, you know. So, but I'm still uh, getting inspired by males and females, and I think that's just you just have to check what is suitable for you, what move you would like to do. But I think it's always better to set your goal higher than uh, than always try to compare yourself just with uh, a lower level, you know. Okay. So what does it, what does happen in the in the mind of of Melanie? Does it motivate you when you see someone like really doing crazy crazy stuff, and when you compare it to someone who is like really superior on a superior level, or is it like just uh, is it demotivating you, or are you like ah, I will get it, like uh, I will be the first uh, female athlete who does this and this? It's it's uh, changing because sometimes I get really motivated, but I think it's it's not really about the videos. It's more about myself, you know, because I have uh, times that I'm super motivated and everything is going really well, and I have times that I'm really looking for motivation, and then my level is going down, and yeah, then whenever I see a crazy trick, I'm just like, oh, that's cool, but I'm not really like, okay, I have to try that, you know, but. Yeah, so it's, it goes up and down, but I think that's normal for most athletes. Okay, and what was the the most uh, intense and successful moment in your career? What is the the one moment uh, that you that you keep in your heart right now? Uh, I think that's the winning this world championship. This because uh, like, yeah, the last one. Yeah, because I remember in 2016, um, I also won, but it was the win was totally different for me because after this year I got injured for five months. Mm -hmm. Then I went back in 2018 to compete. And then I failed two times in the world championship. So I had a year of injury. Then I had a year of failure. And then I had a year that I was winning. So this win for me was really emotional. I remember I couldn't believe it. I just started crying. because I was like, what? <laughs> because that was so two years of a pretty hard mental time for me. And then it feels like everything was worth it in the end, you know? Well, didn't expect that. I expected that it was the first one, you know, like uh, I thought the first win at the world championship is the thing, but uh, like, yeah, makes sense. Um, okay, like uh, what is the, the, the move, the hardest move that you've learned so far? Mm. well i learned it but i don't have it anymore <laughs> does that no. count yeah let's say let's say <laughs> i think that would be the muscle up 540 because okay. um i was a, like four years ago or something i would be able to do it and i i have been trying to get it back and get it back but i i don't know how but i can't get it back <laughs> so i find that the hardest move because it's so hard to to do it right now to do and to keep okay yeah um yeah so like my next question would be what is your advice to someone who wants to learn this move uh but like <laughs> but that's hard like because uh, you could give your the advice maybe to yourself even but no like like what what would be your advice if somebody asks you hey mel i saw the the muscle up for 540 uh how do i learn it for me i think it's really important that you just um start on a low bar or something you know because you have really have to understand what's going on in this movement because you have to stay on top of the bar and that's the scary part of this move because sometimes if you don't go high enough you can maybe hit your back on the bar or like i've seen some people hit their arm or their like it's kind of shit if you don't land it well or your rib because i know small spartan he also injured his rib uh, during this move um but i think just do it a lot of times and that's with every freestyle move you have to uh, do it over and over and over because only then it gets uh, perfect okay so yeah start small maybe with some mats and then just do it one million times and when you feel more secure then you can go higher or harder or just like that but i think most of the time if you go crazy on one move the thing is that you or you can get injured or you get really scared because maybe you feel really bad and then you, you are like, oh, I don't want to do this move anymore. So just start slowly and build it up from there.
what is your plan now to get it back um same, <laughs> same. <laughs> i think yeah i think i'll just uh hopefully the gymnastic will open soon mm -hmm. and uh, like there's the foam pit and everything so maybe i'll just do it there or primitive have a foam pit as well so i'll just have to keep on trying that's it never give up <laughs> yeah and how did you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's something that i will also jump uh, back to in, in a second um but how, where do you keep the, this motivation like where do you get this motivation from to to keep going of course you you say you're a professional athlete it's your job in some way um but um how do you keep the motivation to not say yeah uh, fuck it i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna just learn another hard move like how do you why do we want to to get this move back well it goes same with that it goes up and down because some days i'm like okay i'm not gonna train this move again and then i forget it for a month or something you know so it's not that i'm really focused on it so maybe if i would it would be back already but yeah it's all always hard because now also there's so many moves that you want to learn and so many moves that you need to maintain so it's like you don't have enough time for doing all the moves so you have to choose so sometimes i'm just like okay i'm gonna oh let me try the muscle of 540 again and then i try it maybe 10 times or something and i'm like okay it's not gonna work today okay next next training <laughs> okay okay some uh, like the the situation how we met each other um was uh, 2015 where we launched our calendar and we uh, looked for the 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 strongest the most good looking athletes of course to, uh, to fill the calendar and uh, i also wrote a message to you i still remember it because i didn't expect you to to write back but i was like uh, yeah maybe she answers maybe she wants to uh, be featured and uh, yeah it was like uh, it was really really nice to to have you there um and to to get back to me and also i remember the 2016 bar warrior in in bremen uh because mm -hmm. you also uh, you were also so, this is like it feels like a lifetime ago you yeah. know it's been yeah that's so crazy yeah and it's it's crazy how everything changed like the sport um also we as a person uh like uh the whole thing because i still remember like i, I found it a few weeks ago uh first i found your uh your melanie shirt uh in uh, because we we changed t-shirts i gave you a never give up only pull up shirt and you gave me a, a melanie uh, like you with a crazy design you know melanie bars <laughs> on the back but no oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think with the with the front lever and the planche, right? This I think one. so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like a quote. Yeah. There was also a quote on, on the. Front. Yeah. What was it? Um, Bosch bring out the beast in yes. me. Yes. Yes, that was it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I just <laughs> I just found it. So yeah, that was quite funny because uh, like, um, the question that I have how how did the the person Melanie change since then? Like, what what happened? Uh, in your in your personality in your like in your life we already said but in your personality what what had changed well i think i got um if i look back then i was how, how to say that like um, i think back then i was living more in my ego you know because i remember back then uh when i was doing competitions i don't know I was always um, like in the competition acting like a little bit cool and tough and everything, you know, and I'm not even like that, you know, I'm just, I'm just me and I'm not that person. So I feel like uh, throughout the years, I just get more and more myself and yeah, I'm just still enjoying the sport and yeah, but overall not, I don't really have a big, big change or something okay yeah but i can imagine like the i bet you like everybody is insecure a little bit when he does like his first competitions etc so maybe mm. it was your your uh, strategy to to overplay it to uh, to hide it um and i think everybody has its own uh strategies because yeah mm. you see a lot of athletes doing that and it's not bad yeah. but you see it's not the person like it's a, it's a shy person it's a calm person or something but he's acting exactly like yeah yeah that's that's what happened and i think that that's a lot of people that just starting they're acting like this because probably out of insecurity because you don't know how to act and you're on the stage and everybody's looking at you and everybody's cheering on you so you just be like 
yes <laughs> i think it's just gonna be like that yeah. and then after the years you get more comfortable in competitions well i'm still really nervous but overall it's like it's better than before yeah okay what advice would you give your your let's say 2014 self when you started right now mm. Oh, I would just say like what I said before in the in the interviews, like get more prepared for competitions because I would go into a competition like most of the time not really prepared or I didn't really train my move that often. So when I look back at it, I can see myself uh, failing a lot in competitions. So I think that would be a good advice. Okay. And what are the main errors or like uh, yeah, mistakes that you see young athletes do right now in the scene? Yeah, that's, that's the thing I think. I think I see a lot of people rushing through their rounds. So the, they don't finish the moves, they don't finish the statics. It looks kind of um, a mess. So I think if you look at the, the really pro athletes, they, really, they look really calm in their, in their competition. They finish the move, everything looks really smooth the statics hold are clean and uh, three seconds. So that's what you can, what I see is a beginner or a pro. Okay. And what are your goals for 2020 now? What, uh, what are you working on? Right now I'm working on just getting my level back and my strength back. Cause uh, I was like, I just came out of a little motivation problem. <laughs> Because I think also during the coronavirus uh, um, thing going on, that's really got my motivation down. Because I was preparing for FIBO and everything was going really well. And then I heard the competition is canceled. And then I was like, oh, well, that was my full motivation. And then I was thinking, okay, maybe world championship in July. And then that got canceled. So, yeah. In the last months, it was kind of hard, but now I start to build my strength again and get motivated again to get ready for 2021. Okay. So this year is preparation and next year is uh, competition and showtime. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> exactly. uh, like, um, I think we talked about it once, um, but I still want to, to share with the people, what is your mindset when you go into a competition? Is it, um, I want to crush the other person. I want to show the public that I'm better. I want to uh, make a show for everyone. Like, what is your mindset when you go into a competition? Well, first of all, I'm super, mo uh, super uh, uh, nervous. <laughs> <laughs> when I go in competition, like if people saw me backstage, they're going to be like, what's going on with her? Because I'm walking, I go to the toilet and I go back and, I, and I'm just like stressing out because in my rounds, I don't want to make any mistakes anymore because I, I, I've done that. And I, now I feel like I want to go into my round and do everything well. And when I prepared well, the, I'm a little bit less nervous, but still overall, I'm always super nervous but when i go on stage it feels like i just snap out of it and when i start everything is fine but it's just the way through going into the competitions that it's just like uh. Uh -huh. so yeah no i'm just most mostly i'm just focusing on myself and on the rounds that i prepared well and I, I want to to do that so i'm not really focusing on other athletes at the moment then okay get it like um, if I were a girl or even like I even think it as a as a boy, but uh, like um, how is it possible to to uh, have the performances that you have? Like what is the special thing about you? Is it that you train harder than everyone else? Do you have the, the crazy genetics? Do you have the uh, like do you commit 100 percent to it? What is the difference that that uh, like you your training makes? that you perform as you do and that you have the results that you do? Yeah, I think it's a mixture of experience in competitions, training, of course. Um, and just know, like, I always make sure that I know the rules well mm -hmm. so that I can uh, make my rounds based on the rules. And I think that's a good advice for everybody because a lot of people just go into a competition and they haven't even 
uh, go through the rules so they really don't know what's going on and then they're like well my rounds were really good but how come i get so less points you know yeah. so yeah okay and did you have competitions in, in gymnastics before yes so you have the the experience also from there exactly yeah because in gymnast uh, gymnastics it's more structured right like the everybody reads the rules or the rules are known to everyone or how how can i imagine it in, in gymnastics you have a really a big uh, system of the rules because um when you're young and a young gymnast they just have a routine that everybody have to do the same routine but then when you get older you pass a certain age you can uh, come up with your own routines but there are certain uh, rules for example you have to do a minimum of eight elements um, you have to do three combinations uh, and it should be existing out of this kind of uh, level element and this kind of level element and then you get a bonus so it's like a big puzzle that you have to solve and then you can just choose whatever element suits you and what you like but yeah in my opinion this is not really a nice way because you're not free at all because mm -hmm. yeah the only thing you're free at is choosing your elements but overall yeah it's not it's not so much fun like calisthenics is it uh, not only like is it uh, less fun competing or is it also less fun watching than with these rules well i don't like i think both okay get it so it's not only the music that makes calisthenics interesting but also like the rules and the the yeah the, actually the... not the rules it's more like the freedom that we have yeah. and the, the freedom of making uh, your own moves and coming up with your own combinations and everything okay get it perfect um one question before we go into the quick questions quick answer session what does uh, your nutrition look like what does the nutrition of a world champion look like <laughs> <laughs> well for me it's like when I go to a comp into a competition, I will really focus on eating a lot of vegetables, getting my proteins, but normally I don't really look at the nutritions. Maybe I take some extra vitamin if I don't forget it, or <laughs> I'll just focus on the protein, but it's like, I don't really have a strict line. And that's also my problem because when I'm not out of the competition, most of the time I'm gaining weight like so quickly because I'm eating pie and I'm eating chocolate and then it's just like, <laughs> yeah not so well <laughs> okay so you're more a person that gains easier weight than uh, like losing weight no i'm losing weight easily also but i have i have to work for it like i have okay. to change my my way of eating of course like yeah okay but it's balance you know yeah <laughs> that's true and so uh, yeah nice so we start with the quick questions pizza okay. or burger Mm, pizza <laughs> nice uh, are you a dog or a cat person cat cat okay and uh, your favorite location for holidays uh italy italy a specific city or because of the pizza <laughs> 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 okay a specific city or island or like just in general italy yeah, I just love the culture there. Like the people are really nice, and yeah, I just like the that kind of uh, that country. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And there's a little bit more sun than in the Netherlands, I guess. A lot more, I think. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, what would you work as if social media just disappeared? Or what would change for you? Hmm. If it just was not there anymore? Yeah. I don't think it's going to change whatever I'm doing. Okay. So still competing, doing workshops. Um, okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, do you have a favorite athlete or like a hero from early on, maybe even today? It's really hard because... Um, there's so many athletes right now and a lot of really high level athletes. So everybody have their own style. Um, but if I have to choose one, I would still say Eric Ortiz. Wow. Cause I really like his style and he's really, 
he's really creative still, you know, and he's super strong and he's like OG. So yeah, yeah. if I have to choose one, I would say him. Okay, nice. Um, do you have a favorite book? Are you a reader? No. No, I'm not a reader at all. Okay, skip this question. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> best calisthenics event you've ever been at mm. oh it's gonna be FIBO FIBO like, yeah uh, World of Bar Heroes World of Bar Heroes okay not, so not even like the uh, yeah. the the old days like the king of the bar baristi days but uh, the now nowadays with World of Bar Heroes yeah the ones like the ones that I still haven't been able to compete at because every time I'm injured or something happens or it gets canceled. But like, it looks so cool with the, with the, with the uh, scoring and the lightning and everything and they're organizing it so well. So it's like, yeah, I can't wait to finally compete there. Okay, nice. So hopefully next year, yeah, maybe in two years, we'll see, like we, we don't know. Um, yes. Last question, aesthetics or dynamics? Dynamics. <laughs> dynamics. Nice. And that's not just because I'm, my statics is like, I love statics. I'm not gonna uh, lie about that because uh, I think it's really important to have both, of course, because you're an uh, athlete. But I just love the way of swinging and, and flying through the, through the air. Okay. Get it. Nice. So, um, yeah, if people want to get in touch with you and, uh, or find you, learn from you, how do they find you? You have uh, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, I saw. Like, where, where do they find, find you best? I think it would be best. Uh, I'm most active on Instagram. And TikTok is more... I put some push-up challenges and everything. So maybe people are um excited to to join those kind of challenges that they want to do something like that then then can follow on tiktok but youtube okay. i'm not really ex uh on that yeah i saw that but uh yeah maybe like uh, like instagram you, you reply to your messages and like if people want to uh, yeah get something from you like uh, or reach you in a kind way instagram is the best way right yeah i try to uh, react to the to people but it's hard sometimes because there's most of the time a lot of messages so i'm just choosing sometimes to <laughs> what what to answer and what not to answer nice okay so random perfect um yeah we're coming to an end um before you can say uh goodbye and uh, end the episode i want to thank you melanie for your time like uh, for taking uh, the i don't know like 50 minutes or 40 minutes so uh yeah thanks a lot for that and uh, thanks for everyone listening to this till the end i'm really happy for everyone like taking the, this time because in in nowadays it's like a lot of time 40 minutes to sit down and listen to something so yeah i hope you were able to take some things with you um if you like this episode like comment and subscribe and uh, yeah say subscribe to melanie all her links are in the description and thanks everyone and you can have this uh, the last words goodbye and ciao <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, and hopefully you get really motivated and excited to start training, or if you're already training, never stop, only pull up! <laughs>